Hello, welcome back to That You With Jesus Chick, or welcome if you've never been here before. Today I'm gonna show you a painting that I completed about six months ago, maybe a year, that I had filmed because in my mind I was sort of planning to make this channel. Momentary break. So anyway, I filmed myself painting this picture of a child, a family member of somebody I work with. It wasn't a commission per se because I did not charge for this painting, but when I was learning to paint, it was really important to me that I had some good references. And so I asked people if anyone wanted portraits made of pictures that they had. And this lovely woman with whom I work brought this to me and I painted her family member. So the cool thing about this painting is that I'm essentially painting in such a way as to represent the light. It's, it's something that watercolor does best. In this painting, that's exactly what we're doing. Painting around the light, around the highlights in order to maintain the white of the paper. Anyway, let's cut to the footage of the painting. Okay, starting out with this portrait, I'm using a limited palette, Hansa Yellow Light, Quinacridone, Coral, I believe, and ultramarine blue. And I'm using apparently the smallest brush known to man, probably because I still didn't really know much what I was doing when it came to painting at this point. Oh look, a hard edge right there, making all my shadows right away so hard edged, which actually did work out for this painting, but normally I would recommend keeping everything very soft until coming to that very final layer. And here I am very precisely painting in every little detail with the tiniest brush on the planet Earth. Isn't that funny when you look back at the way that you painted things in the past or did anything in the past before you kind of knew better? Everything that I look back on, I'm either grateful that I was able to figure out how to do or I am kind of annoyed at myself for not always making the best choices not just speaking about painting here but life in general right using a kneaded eraser which was great definitely something I still do and here I am punching up that color painting that exposed ear that's in the light with a color that would make sense for the light to be shining right through that ear, illuminating all the blood vessels and everything inside, making it look kind of reddish. I was really trying to delineate where the shadow was and where the light was. And you can see here that the light is right up against the shadow where I have the white of the paper there on the right side. It would be his right, your left as you look at the screen. And that's the whole idea of painting the light in watercolor. You use the shadow color to illuminate the light because it creates such a beautiful contrast, bright, clear image of, of the pattern of the light on one's face or wherever you're painting a building or coming through a window. And that reminds me, Thomas Schilling, I believe. I can't remember his name. It's completely left my brain, but I recently saw a great video by this guy. He's a apparently renowned watercolorist. Um, he's won many awards and he also is a lifelong architect. So he's extremely adept at painting buildings in a beautiful way. And 
He has some incredible tutorials on YouTube. I only just found this man's channel a week ago, but there was an excellent tutorial about painting the light. So I would like to link that below. He will certainly answer many important watercolor questions you may have. And he's a really interesting man to listen to. He does a great job talking through the subject as he's an expert in it. And I am but a beginner level painter. Let me just say quickly here, I'm painting the eyes and normally there would be a lot more detail in the eyes, but because I'm attempting to illustrate the fact that the light is just piercing through his eyes, I leave them kind of stark. One tip for painting eyes in watercolor, if you're trying to go for a realistic look, even if the person has blue eyes or say green eyes, any color really other than brown, you don't wanna pick your bluest blue or your greenest green. You can see there to the left, that patch of blue on my palette, on my mixing tray. Imagine if I had made his eyes that blue. It would definitely not look very realistic. Blue eyes tend to look gray most of the time, unless there's a very specific lighting situation. Many times they're far more neutral than you would think kept making eyes so vividly bright. And you know, sometimes they are in certain lighting circumstances or certain people because they have very extremely colorful eyes. Maybe they are those true blue or true green hues, but most often they're kind of neutraled out with the color complement or on the color wheel, the direct opposite color. If you mix, say, a blue with a, an orange or a yellow and a purple, or a red and a green, you're going to get a neutral. I'm kind of punching up the shadow color there on his face. Here I am making a nice little wash with multicolors. You'll notice I have literally no bead on that wash. I believe I thought at the time that that was what I had there was a bead because there was like a little bit of a little bit of um, water, but nay nay, doesn't really count. Although I really do like how this wash turned out. I wasn't really sure what to do with the background and the little boy was standing kind of in a grassy field. So I just sort of represented the colors that were present in the field behind him, which was kind of, I mean, it, like I said, it worked out well, but I probably would do it differently if I was doing it today. That was the first time I had ever drawn a hand. The photo obviously was taken from above, looking down on him. Oh, you can see the neutral colors, like the grays from mixing the blues and green and the pink together a little bit. Since I was using a limited three color palette, I think it turned out pretty, pretty cool. 
as we kind of go through and finish up the wash here, punching up the shadow colors and the sunlight colors on his skin. In the shot, you can see there on the right hand side that just like a sketchbook painting I was working on at the time, I didn't realize that was in the shot until I was voicing this over. So, oops. And I've gone back to a really small brush again. I guess, I mean, that's okay, I suppose. I am doing some like pretty detailed stuff there, but just use this as a reminder anytime you can go in with a large brush it really will create a much looser look to your work this piece is so tight and there's nothing wrong with that look people do tight and well controlled paintings beautifully I just um, I'm slowly trying to learn to let my paintings be a little bit looser because I think it's a better way at least to my mind when I paint loosely I prefer the outcome the way the paintings look and um, it represents much more of an openness for me in the painting oh here I am really punching up the colors in this little boy's face and I know it looks kind of weird that there's like a line on his nose, but there actually was sort of a line delineating the upper part and the lower part of his nose in the, um, in the picture. So I kind of went with it. And as I add more color to his face, now you can start to see the way that the eyes um, really reflect the piercing kind of sunlight shining right into them. After adding the background in, I really had to up the saturation. It looks like here I am doing a little more blending. That's good. I'm kind of letting one color go into the next. But I'm doing it so carefully. Oof. I was very nervous. I can tell. I can feel it. I hope that you got some value out of watching me make this painting and hearing me talk about it. And I'm so glad that I was able to share it. Even the little bit of knowledge that I had, I'm so glad I was able to share this with you. Come